Hello, my name is Igor, and in this episode, I'm designing and 3D printing a Rubik's Cube 2x2x2 two 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 version. Rubik's Cube is invented by Erna Rubik, a Hungarian architect, and I'm designing and 3D printing it not because I need one, but because of curiosity. Conventional Rubik's Cube works on principle that there are some extensions which are part of the sphere. And then I saw a very nice animation by Jared Owen. Unfortunately, of the real cube, he posted only one image, but I was very curious how does it work in reality. And then I saw another animation. Those links will be in the description if you want to check them. And then I decided to design and 3D print one version. It will be a very nice challenge. So first I will explain you how does it work, this new principle. Then I will show you main design steps in Fusion 360. Then I will show you, uh, explain you the slicer and the 3D printing part and I will assemble it. And the last part will be that I will solve it in front of the camera, but uh, it will be speed it up because I'm not fast cuber. For this I need maybe one and a half minutes. For three by three I need four minutes. For this one, four by four, I need maybe 20 minutes. I never measured, so. I think it will be fun. First I will hide all, all corner pieces. And here you can see there is a sphere inside of this cube. It's a core. And around there are these curved panels, so there are some gaps between. And you can see one of the corner pieces is attached to this sphere. Basically these are two hemispheres. Here you can see some holes for the pins, they will be attached together here. And this is the second part. And they be screwed together. Here uh, is the hole for the M3 uh, countersink uh, screw. And then let's see one of the corner pieces. So here it is. Here you can see it, it has a leg which goes directly into these gaps, this channel. I will hide for the moment the core. Now you can see better these legs. So here is the surface which uh, slides on the sphere in the middle and the legs are moving into this in this channel. I will hide this box. So if I want to move this column here, these four pieces, they are moving around this core. But if I want to move this corner piece which is attached to the sphere, then it is moving together with the core. Now let's see the design steps. If you are familiar with Fusion 360, then probably you know what this long design history line means. This means I cannot show you every single step, only a few milestones in the design. But the good news is that the uh, source file of this Fusion 360 will be uploaded to my website so you can download it and uh, play with it or analyze it yourself. So I started with the sphere and I created a cube and then I added a few more spheres. So the, uh, then these spheres will be the base where I will clear, create that channel gap in the core of the Rubik's Cube. Then I use the split tool to split this cube into eight pieces. Then I use the push tool to create this first gap. So again I use the push tool and boolean tool to create this gap here in the lower part, uh, just above the core sphere. Then I had to create the legs for the corner pieces, so I extruded this rectangle to the main core sphere. And I will use the boolean tool to cut this part here. So the legs of the corner pieces are now created, here you can see. And basically this is the main design. But the problem is that now it is exactly aligned, there is no absolute clearance. If I could print this with 100% uh, precision, then I could be finished. 
everything after this is because the tolerance I need some clearance so the parts can be moved because the 3d printing is not 100% precise manufacturing so here I can see I created started with these gaps because I had some failed prints first I started with 0.1 millimeter gap then 0.35 and then my final was uh, with the 0.22 millimeter gap after creating the clearance I was chamfer the edges so the object the corner pieces will be easier moved and it will not stuck to each other and then I started to create these parts here because I had to create the holes on these spherical parts where the corner piece will be rotating next important milestone is to create the holes for the pins and the, for the screw because these three holes will be for the pins which are used to align these two hemispheres together and the screw will hold these two pieces strongly together so this object will be used to create a holes for the comfortable rotating of the corner piece in one uh, around one axis and after boolean tool we have enough space here and it's hard to see here where the corner piece will be rotating around the axis next important milestone in this design is to create a custom support for this leg here because it will be printed in this position I couldn't use the automatic supports generated by Prusa Slicer uh, somehow the automatically generated supports are not in the same layer height as the printed object and the nozzle hit the supports and always the support moved from the printing bed I have at least five six failed prints I tried different settings and then I decided to create my own custom supports for this object so here there is a 0.1 millimeter gap between these two objects the only contact point is here on uh, this point and also I create some cone here because this will be too big overhang for some 3d printers and uh, here I have uh, some kind of safe overhang and this part will be printed with the bridging and now this can be printed without any problems let's see the slicer and the printing and this is the hemisphere with attached box uh, corner piece on it this can be printed with completely without supports but also I raised the number of the parameters to 4 and I added a color change here on the last layer because I don't want to paint this color everything is in white color and this will be in red or orange color this is the hemisphere the lower part and this is the only object where I need a supports but I need supports only for this area here because after this th these parts will be printed with the bridging and also here I raise the number of the perimeter at least to four but everything else will be printed without the problem here
So after loading the object in the Prusa slicer, let's slice it and let's preview the printing. I'm using 0.15 mm layer height and very important that uh, I raise the number of the perimeters to 4 because the weakest point will be here and you, maybe it's even better here to raise the temperature to get better layer adhesion. So if we study the printing, so you can see this is the support, custom made support by designed by me. And here it starts the contact. Only one contact point and then there is a 0.1 millimeter gap between support and the object, so it will be easier to separate it. Then it will be printed and here it starts the overhang. That's another critical point and after that you can finish it. Only I added a layer change in the last layer because the corner piece will be in white color and the last layer will be in red or orange color so I don't have to paint this surface here. Okay, so here are the 3D printed parts. Uh, you will need these seven corners. The eighth corner is attached to this hemisphere and there is another hemisphere. Now, uh, these are holes for these pins. These are my standard for uh, attaching two pieces together. So I only have to create a hole with a four millimeter in diameter, five millimeter deep, and I can attach them with this. But to hold it tightly together, I will use this uh, countersink uh, screw, but important with this hex uh, for Allen key. This is the M3 size. Uh, M3 by, I think, 16 millimeters is this version, but between 12 and 20, I think they, they will fit into. With these corner pieces, it is important you have to clean only uh, this leg here where the custom support was uh, attached. One thing I learned is, first, uh, in my first attempt I used the high temperature PLA, but printing with the same setting, same temperature, and I noticed that the, this leg breaks too easily because of the weak layer adhesion. So uh, then I raised the temperature by 15 degrees and uh, this time it is much stronger and I cannot even break with my hands. So these pins will be used uh, to attach these two hemispheres together and a countersink screw will be used to hold them together. Since this hole has to be big enough to this M3 screw goes inside completely. Okay. And it will be screw, so thread is only needed here, but uh, I noticed so M3 thread, it cannot be printed, it's, it's very hard to print it. Uh, I designed it an M3, but uh, to be sure that it will go inside, first I have to check the hole is big enough, this is 2.5 millimeter diameter drill tool. Okay, so this hole is good enough for thread, and then I have this M3 tap, 
just to be sure that, that this treat will be good. So I will insert the countersink screw now here. And then I will put these pieces there. This is uh, where the edge is, so these two holes go together. And there is our screw, so that's why you need a version with the Allen key, because it can fit into this hole to tie this screw. Okay, don't over tie it because it's plastic. And here it is, not the best cube, what can I tell you, but uh, it works. And this is my third attempt. The clearance is ex extremely important. This is my first failed print, then I created this version where the cl uh, clearance was too big. Here I used 0.50 millimeter clearance that was too small. Here I used 0.35 or maybe even 0.4. That was too big, definitely. And uh, between them, I think this is with uh, 0.25, I think. And this version works really, really good. Okay, I have only three colors. So theoretically this should be in yellow color, but I don't have yellow permanent marker, only this black one. Okay, let's solve it. Not bad, I was a little bit lucky uh, with the random colors on the start, but yes, it, 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 it worked fine. Okay, the conclusions. Well, uh, it was very hard. Uh, I really had a lot of failed prints, but I learned several things. I learned a lot about the, how important is the clearance in moving mechanical parts. I learned that uh, custom-made supports may be sometimes better than generated, uh, automatically generated by Slicer. And <laughs> I also uh, learned that uh, my PLA Plus, Game Beard PLA Plus, theoretically it has the same temperature range for 3D printing as the ordinary PLA, but uh, in that case the layer adhesion was not strong enough, so I had to raise the temperature uh, by 15 degrees to get good adhesion between layers. So that's that's some kind of uh, better thermal resistance uh, PLA. So, okay. And uh, last thing, uh, if you need a 2x2x2 two by two by two Rubik's Cube, don't read the print one, buy one. <laughs> if you like the challenge, then definitely you should try. I will even post not only STL files, but uh, also a source file for Fusion 360, so you can play with the clearance because uh, probably your settings of your 3D printers may be different a little bit and you need a little bit higher or smaller clearance. So if you want, you can play with those files. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you learned uh, several things here because I learned at least three, four new things for me. Thank you for watching. Happy printing. Bye.